Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Temperus Incorporated and Goku, and we're going to be giving you guys a little bit of a commentary and kind of our ideas of what you should be doing on Haven Extraction. And just going to start it up here. And also, this is brought to you by Average Pro Gamers. Are you trying to become a pro, but just an average gamer? Join us today to learn new tips and tricks on how to become a pro, an average pro gamer. Also, just going to give you a little bit of a gameplay, just so uh, you have something to watch before you go on your little holiday break to see fireworks and stuff. So, uh, here's Goku. Okay. Thank you for the kind introduction. To everyone out there that doesn't know me, my name is Goku, and my gamer tag is also Goku Rises. I've been playing Halo since about Halo 2, and I've taught a lot of players how to play this game, and I've decided to take my ideas um, to the media and kind of show the community what I've learned through my years of Halo. So I believe what's really important on a lot of these maps is the opening strat. The opening strat sets the tempo of the game. If you're not able to open the game correctly, then it's going to put you in a situation where you always feel like you're playing the underdog role. And it's never good to feel like you're the underdog because then the pressure is constantly on you to make the play, and it's a lot harder. So what's really important is controlling the tempo. Off the start of the game, I like to give myself the best positioning as possible. Um, I see a lot of people run top middle. I believe this is kind of what I would call a dead zone because as you go dead in zone, you're capable of being shot from multiple directions. So for my opinion, the best thing to do is set yourself in position to put shots on the most people as possible. So off of extraction, I like to run to the bottom middle right here. As I come across, I jump through here. I look down the hall through right here by bottom close to see if the other person is coming down bottom red down in this direction. If they happen to not be coming down this direction, I'll look up to see close talk in top middle to try to get eyes on anybody that I can see. Um, in the past, I've heard people call it eagle eyes when you look for camo or you look across the map to sight any of your opponents. This is something I think is real effective in Halo. Um, you might be also wondering why we're doing this in Forge. The reason we are doing this in Forge is so you can see the spawn points and a lot of the breakdowns of the game to the very fundamentals and simplistic as much as it can be. I'm going to break down this video as much as I can all the way down to the core. So as I come down here through bottom blue, I like to come through the pillars and look around as much as possible, kind of see where my opponents are. Like I said, if I don't see anybody, then I'll come down here. I'll come around bottom closed. I'll kind of peek out. I don't really like to show myself as much as possible because I feel like the less they know where I'm at, the less they can call out. So I come up right here. I put my sight on Rogan right away to make sure that there's nobody going for it. I look to my right to clear off Red Street. I take one more look down bottom red to make sure nobody's came on a, a slower route to flank me while I'm doing my thing. And once I've secured my position on the map, then I'll extend forward and grab the Rogan. From here, what's really important is listening to your teammates' the communication. Look for any of your teammates that did push top middle for the extraction and see if they are getting shot or they need your help. If it is very urgent that they need your help, then pull your power weapon out and extend a little bit to the leg right here and try to help them out. If it's not very immediate for you to help them or you have another teammate in a position, then do your best to small talk and communicate them into position. For example, if I was right here and I had a teammate top middle needing help, I would communicate to Nick or Temporistic from the other side of top middle to help him without me having to run towards him because a lot of players make a very fundamental mistake of using tunnel vision. They'll be from one place and they'll see somebody across the map and they'll run in a direct line towards them. This is one very fundamental mistake that you make because as you go towards them, you leave your back open for flanks. You are also in the dead zone. You're capable of getting shot from any direction. So it's very important that you secure your positioning on the map. Halo is a lot more about positioning and tempo than it is about getting kills. The misconception of the situation is a lot of people play Team Slayer off at the start of Halo, so in their opinion, they think it's all about kills. But this isn't that kind of game. On the competitive scene, it's a lot more about holding roles and positions. You're, when you play competitive Halo, you're bound to see a lot of players that support, and they go negative, but a lot of times they're the most important player to their team. And so, <clears throat> in this position, I would come up here, do my best to control the tempo of the game. I'm going to look up here, I'm going to look right, I'm going to look left constantly back and forth to get my eyes on the first person I can see. The first person I see pushing from one of these bridges is going to enable me to know which spawn point they've received. For example, if you know I push down this up to closed and my teammates died on blue, and then I see one of their teammates push out of blue, I know that the rest of their team is going to come from blue, so I'll, I'll jump up here, look bottom blue, look down blue bottoms, kind of get a direction of where they're going, see if they're going open or if they're going bottom closed. Off of this, what's also really important and why we're doing this is Forge, you can see the spawn points. Because, for example, like say you see one person running bottom blue and he comes across this position right here by this pillar, there's a spawn point down there. And if one of his teammates is dead and he stands near that, he can actually control his teammate's spawns 
A lot of people don't know how to anchor. Um, anchoring is something that a term that I've heard in Call of Duty, but I believe it's important to Halo as well. When you have a support player that can sit back and give your teammates good spawns and kind of just control the tempo of the game, it very, really much helps more than anything because, for example, if you have a main player or a top-notch player on your team, like a straight sick, you know, um, an absolutely, you know, one of these kind of people that hit a lot of shots that can play very well, then you want to enable him to do his best. You know, think of it as more like a sport. You know, it's a team effort. If we're playing basketball and you have Kobe on your team, you're not going to sit there and keep shooting random shots. You're going to try to give Kobe the best opportunity you can to score the ball. You know, and that's the same thing you want to look at with, with Halo is you want to give your best player the best opportunities to make plays. So if you have a quality main player, you want to put as many power weapons in his hand as possible. As the support player or, or AKA anchor, you want to give yourself all, multiple options to get away and stay alive. So that's why it was, I said that close talk was very important because say I'm standing close talk and I get pushed from red, I can always go blue and use communication and teamwork to stay alive, vice versa from red to blue. And so this is just a little bit of the opening strat. What's um, really important is your ability to rotate the map because on maps like this, you can't always completely set up at all times just because the fact that you have sprint and the shooting on this game is a little bit easier slightly, no, not even slightly, it is easier than a lot of the previous Halo games as far as, you know, um, Halo 2 and 3 reaches um, debatable. I mean, they both have a different type of shooting, but they're both a lot easier than previous Halo games. Anyways, um, what I'm getting at is, for example, you got to pay attention to the tempo of the game. Like, if I'm standing right here and I see that my, my teammates are all dead, they're all three down. Like, I've seen this m multiple times. One kid will push towards the extraction to try to stop the other team from getting it. But what you have to understand is the only person alive, unless there's like two seconds on the clock, you're not going to be able to stop them from extracting that. The best thing you can do is put yourself in position to get a counter extract. So, for example, if you see that they're extracting it on red, instead of pushing towards them, run down red and look at a couple of these spawn points. There's one right here. There's multiple red spawn points down the bottom red ramp. And there's also one down here on the bottom of red. So if you can enable yourself to get around any of these spawn points, you can spawn your teammates near you. And if you can spawn your teammates near you and say come up red ramp and you're still playing support, don't forget this, you know, as you come this way, you'll find there is a light rifle on either side of the map. And you can grab this rifle, and this will enable you to play your position a lot easier. And as you can see, here's some of the starting spawn points. These also work for spawning your teammates. And so as you come up this ramp, you can look and get a good view on the extraction. And if you have a light rifle on the extraction, you automatically make yourself a priority to the other team because the fact that the light rifle is one of the quickest killing guns on this game enables you to completely defend the extract more than you would have from the close. You know, the only reason you started to close was to give your team a better chance. But the fact that your team lost the opening battle, you want to come here and give yourself a chance to still win, you know, the opening extract. Because anytime you give your team a situation to be in the lead, you control the tempo of the game. You're not going to be the one, you know, working to, to not lose. You're going to be the one to protect your win. Like, for example, like, if it's 1-0, you don't need the next extract. All you have to do is make sure they don't get the next extract. And a lot of people forget this. They overextend and they push themselves in bad positions in the map. And that's why a lot of the game seems so chaotic and random, you know. But Halo is not really a random game and it's not a luck game. It's a game based off of consistency and skill. And it's, for example, if you were to go to the Lakers or the Celtics or top one of these NBA franchises and not know how to dribble the ball, but you had the best three-point shot ever in the world, you still probably wouldn't be a starter. You probably wouldn't even be on the team just because you have to master your fundamentals before you can play anything on a competitive pro level. Same thing with Halo. And so you can master your fundamentals. You really can't play on a capable pro team. So going from there, you know, I'm trying to move forward a little bit. I feel like I'm stalling a little too long. Um, after the initial first extraction, you're going to have the extraction comes right here. And why this is really important is because you still have this light rifle. Now you're able to look at this one. B is usually one of the hardest extracts to cover um, just because it's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of people trading kills. But in all honesty, if you can get the extract for your team and you're able to get eyes on it with light rifle, it could be a very easy extract for your team. But in certain positions, um, you're going to realize that a lot of people are going to keep sprinting towards it. There's going to be a lot of trading kills and things like this. So what I feel is real important is enabling your teammates to get really good spawns. So for example, say you're right here and you realize that the other team has the extract. You're not able to get them from, you know, stopping to get the extract. And that's when you have to be willing to be smart enough to adjust your strategy. And you have to put yourself in the same position with a different angle. For example, if you come jump down here, bottom red, you will see that there is spawn points down here. And there's also pillars for cover. But this is important is because you can get eyes on bottom blue from right here, also eyes on bottom close, and you're able to spawn your teammates anywhere near you if they need to. And so this is very crucial to your role. I've tried to teach multiple players how to play support 
and they kind of misunderstood it because they constantly try to kill people. Understand as a support player, you could get zero kills. If your team still wins, you did your job. So, from that understanding, you want to constantly put shots on people. Anytime you have two or three shots on one person, look for your next target. Don't look to finish the kills. Communicate and angle yourself to control the map as best as possible. And so, as we come down here and we look at this extract, you know, we'll see that the most most likely the other team is going to be on the opposite side of the street. You might have a few people flanking from random directions, but if you're able to communicate and hold your position, you can team shot these kids real well because they have to jump and sprint to get out of bad position. For example, if they're coming bottom closed, plasma spawn down here. So you can very easily constantly keep throwing plasmas right here so they're forced to come to the blue side of bottom close. Now, um, say that you're in a position where your whole team dies and they're pushing towards you. You know, this is one of the real negative situations where I see people die. Um, honestly, there's, there's sometimes you can't control the situation. So the best thing you can do is constantly take their attention away from your teammate. So if you're not able to give your teammate spawn, say they're chasing you down and you're not going to be able to get the good spawn, well, do your best to just jump around, you know, the map and keep make them chase you. If, you. if you leave this bottom area and you come up here, they have the choice of either chasing you and leaving the extract and no longer being able to defend it or letting you go. If they let you go, then you'll be able to spawn your teammates right here and make another effective push. What's really important about controlling the tempo of the game is the small talk between your teammates and enabling your teammates to know what you're planning on doing and what that you need them to do. A lot of people blurt call-outs out, but they don't listen, so it goes both ways. You, you can't just call out. You also have to listen to call-outs. Right. And so going off of that, the B extract, you know, is pre pretty simplistic. It's not the hardest. And then, um, you know, going to C extract, I'm going to... I'm going to turn over the mic to my buddy Temporistic because you've gotten about two opinions from me on two different extracts and you know this video is a dual commentary so feel free to hear what he has to say on C extract and I'll be back with you for you. Alright guys, Temperistic here again and uh, just a little bit from after you get B or about 10 seconds uh, left on B you want to send about two guys starting to go to C one uh, top and one bottom because you don't want to push in the same area just Kind of stupid, cluster fucking in the area. And uh, the last two guys can just watch it and they'll be good. And coming down here at C, you want to. Uh, what The guy on the bottom, he wants to just wait for the guy on top because uh, if they're controlling the plats, then you'll just go for it. And it's not a one second extract, you know, it's three seconds, so they can just throw two nades from both plats and you're going to be dead. And then they'll just double team the guy top mid and that'll be that. So once the guy at Tommy confirms that the area is clear, you can uh, get it and he can either drop down or the other two guys can come from the tunnels down to bottom blue and or uh, bottom red and convert on the guy's bottom that's trying to stop you. And then once you get control of it, uh, what I like to do with my team is one guy stands in the corner here either on blue or red because uh, the guys on the plat don't really look down because you're going to have a guy hopefully with a sniper back over, and over here watching the plat and then you got you don't want to wait for them to push you you want to hold top mid and stay on the plats and just check the spawns because they're going to be spawning hawk or red or blue and uh, once you know where they're spawning you know after you kill them you just look at the next ones and oh and one more thing I want to talk about don't convert it right in the middle Try to convert it on the blue side or the red side because that'll just make it easier for you to control. And uh, you won't have to have a guy necessarily on both flats. You could have a guy on up here on the nerd and you can have a guy up on top blue. And the nerd guy, he'll just be up here and uh, it doesn't really matter where you're up on the nerd. Just like I like to go on the highest point just because uh, they don't really have that much of like a viewpoint on me when they're jumping hawk to top mid. So I'm going to be kind of hidden, and uh, so let's say they both come bottom in and then double team my buddy down at one of the corners at bottom uh, of the extraction down at bottom open. After they kill him, they're going to go for the extraction because hopefully there's no one else on your team that's on open. Hopefully the sniper guy is going to be on uh, top blue or top red or on one of the plats. And uh, I'll just throw two nades down here, and or one nade, and uh, clean them up because I'll have a really good view on it. And then after that, uh, 10 seconds left on the extraction, you still have it. The guy on the plat, he's going to be going on blue side because that's what you're controlling. And uh, all you have to pretty much watch is Hawk and the guy on top blue can just throw. Let me go top blue and show you. He, he doesn't necessarily even have to move. He just 
throws two nades, one right there, and the bank's out there, and then the bank's kind of out there. And uh, you can make them both weak, and it should be an easy extract because it's three seconds. And then after that, don't go on the landings unless you know that they're spawning uh, red or blue, and you can get a pretty good spawn kill. Because uh, one guy might lift up red landing usually, and then two guys push top red, and then there's always going to be a guy on Hawk. And that's another thing on top mid extract that you want to control is the Hawk, because that guy is the pretty much the middle point guy. He can see both sides. And if he has nades, he can get the guy uh, if he's trying to get it from uh, top open. And uh, so you're going to have a guy top blue sniping. Or actually, you could rotate the guy with a sniper to Hawk, and that'll be pretty easy because he can see the guys at top red going to bridge because they're probably only going to send one guy to red street and uh, to kill you if they know you have the sniper there. And that's pretty much the top mid one. They... If they spawn open and you're playing a pretty good team, they're just going to push the bottom. No reason to drop down and chase them. And uh, The only reason that they're going to not push bottom is if they're grabbing that snipe. And it should be easy for you to kill them because you have to be a high advantage. Uh, top mid one I'd say is pretty much the easiest one because it's, it's simple. You just have to hold top and that's that. So uh, I'm going to leave uh, here and see if Goku has any final thoughts on the extractions, anything he wants to touch up on. So uh, here he is. Yeah. Alright, can you hear me? Okay, sorry about that. I had to turn my mic off so nobody could... I didn't have all background noise while you were talking. Um, now, to add what Temperistic was saying, the only thing I would say that we kind of have not gone over yet is power weapon control. Um, the, the ability to control power weapons can really change the tempo of the game, even when they have the right positioning. For example, they can be controlling the nerds or the wings or however you refer to them. And if they are, then you having the power weapon can really make the difference in the game. For example, a sniper or railgun. Um, a lot of people aren't persistent on these times. As long as you constantly time your power weapons, you will um, you will have a lot greater chance of winning the game. Um, for you, those of you that don't know, sniper and railgun usually come up every two minutes from the touch. Um, sometimes you know you play different maps and the changes time. I call oh, no, it no, the, dirty, the real um, gun weapon times. Dirty it uh, weapon comes times. up, uh, it's uh, static, so it comes up without you touching. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, it's every three minutes, oh, okay. so 50 okay. minutes to start, then four minutes, nine minutes, and so on and so forth. Okay, well, as you heard, um, Nick was correcting me on that. Um, a little, little off on it, yeah. because they change the settings a lot with these different variations of extraction and um, AGL and PGL and all the different leagues we have right now. So but Sniper is uh, um, it, two minutes. It is actually uh, three minutes. Yeah. And it is... Yeah, and the Sniper the sniper is two minutes. So that being said, the Railgun will be the more important power weapon to control because there is less of them on the map. So this being said, um, the fact that you can dirty your Sniper time and the Railgun is static, you want to constantly time your Railguns and use your power weapon in a chain reaction. Like, for example, by you getting railgun at, um, you know, the three minute mark, and then you, you want to sit there and get in good positioning for when the sniper comes up. And as long as you have the railgun to cover the sniper when it comes up, you can enable your teammate to get the sniper because they're not going to be able to push that side if you have railgun. And once you enable your team to have two power weapons on their side, you have a way greater advantage than the other team because you are, have the ability to get insta kills with your railgun or your sniper. And so, what I think is real important is, for example, um, getting your own basis for the time. Like when I when I'm playing this map and I'm controlling sniper, like I know it's my role to be the slayer or the or the main slayer, slayer objective, anything that involves slaying, and I'm I'm involving myself with the sniper. What I try to do is always dirty it by 20 seconds, um, just so I know that the other team might show up 20 seconds ahead of time, and it'll give me a chance to get in position to get a free kill and get the power weapon. Um, another thing about this is there's two frags that spawn top middle right here, and so. As you, as you say, for example, if you spawn top blue or top red and you know that the power weapon is coming up within 10 to 15 seconds, you can always go, jump up right here, grab some nades, and look down and kind of see what's going on. Throw nades on, nades on these pillars to make sure they're not hiding, and enable yourself to jump down and look around, control your surroundings, and communicate with your teammates to enable yourself to get the power weapon. One thing that I think is very crucial is unless you know that the other team is two down, three down, or you have complete control of this side of the ramp, to necessarily bait the power weapon a little bit because baiting it can allow you to get free kills 
Um, if you have no idea where the other team is at, your teammate is, is kind of trying to figure out where they're at, where they're spawning, what's going on. And sometimes it's good to leave sniper there because a lot of people have tunnel vision, like I explained earlier, and they'll come directly for the sniper thinking that if they can get the sniper, they can help their team, not realizing that the communication with their team is a lot more important. So, for example, if you come on this pillar and you look red ramp, you might catch a kid trying to get on the wing. Same thing with blue. You know, keeping eyes on these kind of things, like I said, is very crucial. Um, one thing myself personally I like to not do that I see a lot of kids do, I, I see a lot of kids standing right here trying to protect the extract or standing on these walls. I, I suggest that you don't do that because to me you're just a floating target. Um, I think what's really important about controlling this extract is controlling the wings and the rotation of bottom middle. Um, for example, you don't have to control an extract, you don't always have to sit on it, um, but at the same time you don't want to overextend. So imagine that you know most maps are something similar to football fields, there's a 50 mark and there's a mark you cross where you play offense and you play defense. So as long as if you were to come down here bottom closed, anything from this bottom pillar down here, you know, if you're on this side, this is defense. If you're on this side, this is offense because as you are on this side, you're able to put your back towards the, the wall or open ramp and know that nine times out of ten, unless your teammates are not calling out with you, you should not get beat down or should not be getting a sneak attack on you. You should have the people in front of you. And so when, and when you have somebody in front of you, um, me personally, I feel like you could, it's always easier to get the lead shot. And the lead shot is really important in some BR battles because if you guys are both completely on hitting all four shots, the lead shot can be the main difference between who wins the BR fight. So I say it's very crucial to control that. Um, one thing that's really important is to have your teammates calling out for you so you can enable yourself with the best positioning. If you find yourself um, two down or even three down and you're, you're down here by yourself or there's two of you, the first thing you want to do is to feel out, figure out what side of the map they are spawning on and where are they at. So if you figure out that they're on red, then use your, you know, control blue so that when your teammates spawn, they'll spawn blue because if you don't control one side of these maps, then your teammates are going to spawn closed more likely than not and they're going to have to go from one side of the map to the other to get to the extract. So it's really important to control either blue or red for your teammates' sake. Um, understand I explained roles earlier. Not everybody's always going to be able to play the role they want to play. Sometimes, you know, you could be the slayer, you know, but it is going to be your job to get the spawns. If everybody dies and you're the only person alive, you shouldn't keep going for kills. You should run to the nearest spawn point you can find. Um, if you're not familiar with all the spawn points on all these different maps, then I suggest you come to Forge like I do and memorize them all. And that being said, I feel like we've gone over Extract C pretty well. Um, if you have any other suggestions, Nick, go ahead. If not, then continue. Um. Well, just as a side note, uh, you said at the beginning that like, lateral control is uh, crucial because it's a four-shot kill scoped in and it pretty much shoots faster than any other weapon besides the DMR, I think. And uh, and they spawn at 60... Uh, every, every... What is it? What is it? Uh, 30 seconds. So, always be checking down here. Like, after you... Yeah. Like, after each kill you get, if you like, have the opportunity, always check down there. Uh, another thing that annoys me when I go in matchmaking, yeah. especially by myself, is I see kids when like there's only one down or when like the numbers are even, go for the extraction, and like I'm fine if you go for the extraction when it's only like when it's like nobody's touched it yet, because you're trying to get a surprise to, like convert, and that's pretty much what I do, and I usually get it like I don't know, like 70% of the time, but yeah, but uh. <laughs> But please, unless you have two down, unless you have two up on them, like one of them is down and two you guys or three you guys are up, like please don't go for it because you don't know where like the other two guys are and like the team shot isn't gonna be like that great if like it's a two v two, you know, because like it's not gonna be a team shot or like if it's a if it's like three. You yeah. Want me to explain that a little bit better. Okay. Okay. So, basically, what my friend um, Temperistic is trying to explain to you guys is that in situations like I explained earlier of a four four v four standoff, when you have all teammates alive, it is very crucial to control the tempo or the positioning of the map. When you have one person going for the extract and leaving his three other teammates to defend, it is very less likely that you are going to win a three on four unless you have a power weapon or you make a really good play. And so understand that the most important thing is controlling the tempo. What you want to do is get one down first, sometimes two, 
and then go for the extract. And even then, it could be a wrong move because if the other team is bottom middle, they can easily nade you off the extract. And then just like that, it's a three on three again. Or you could even lose two people, and then they have the advantage three on two, and they're getting the extract. So what's very important is um, when I, when I grew up playing Halo, um, I remember that I seen a couple a couple different people play. I can't remember the name about it. I remember Gandhi mentioned the guy um, before. Um, he explained that when he did like when he played with his team in, in Halo One, that they didn't really necessarily even go by names. They were just like player one, player two, player three, and player four. And the reason I think this is very important is because by enabling the, these positions, you can enable priority positions. For example, say um, we we were a team of three or a team of four down here on the open ramp, and we just killed one person. I could be like somebody. We need player one. We need a player one. We need a player one. When I say player one then that person will know that he needs to run bottom middle because this is the very first priority position we need to make sure that they're not just they're not sneaking around making sure that they're just waiting for us and then once we have this one person enabled the position he's like all right we're good to go go for the extract then that second person is able to go for the extract that is the smarter play and then you can have your two people on the sides pushing the angles that they might come from for example um they might come from the wings or they might come from top middle so knowing this if you have pulse nades or any kind of nades, you can throw them towards top middle to get their attention and to keep your eyes on the wings. Or you could have one teammate watching open ramp. You get one teammate watching the wings. There's various different ways to set up the two people on the open ramp. But the most important thing is having the one person pushing bottom middle first to make sure you don't have somebody hiding down there to get a free kill. And so I think, you know, that's yeah. more or less what he was trying to get at. Um, I've had the same problems when I've, I've played matchmaking that when you play matchmaking, you have a lot of kids that just because it's objective game type, they force the objective. They either pull flags when you have all your teammates up, or they you could be facing an overshield guy and they pull the flag in the most crucial moment. Um, so that's why small talk is really important. If you like to pull a flag or go for an extract, small talk with one of your teammates so that you have a, a another opinion on if it's the best decision at all. You know, for example, if like I was playing with Nick and we just killed one or two down, I'd be like, all right, all right, should I go for extract? Should I go for extract? And he's like, yeah, go for it. Then I'm gonna go for it. But if he's like, no, no, they're spawning blue, help me, then I'm going to turn back and help them kill on blue. And sometimes it's really good to overslay. Um, some people consider it statting. I don't. I think by overslaying, you destroy the other team's yeah, momentum. Uh, and you take over like the, the first, the the first time you slay, like, you don't necessarily have control, and then after you control it, yeah, you slay him again. Some teams do that. And then, like, after you, after you control him while you have, like, yeah. control of them, you can get the objective. What, what I feel like a big part of that comes down to is chemistry. The longer you play with your team, the less slaying you have to do because you guys know what you're supposed to do to get the plays done. But when you're a newer team, you need to slay a lot more to give yourself opportunities to make the right plays so you can get experience and chemistry together. And because different play styles mesh in different ways, that's why this is also important. For example, you might have a main slayer that is really aggressive. And because of that, you know, you need to make sure that you over slay before you go for the extract because if he's really aggressive and there's two people pushing him, he might just challenge them and get killed and then put your team in the more or less bad positioning of the map. So it's, it's very important to kind of let the plays play themselves out, not to force them. Understand an objective, it's more or less a stalemate half the time. So it's about giving yourself the edge in the stalemate, not going for the objective. Once you have the edge in the stalemate, then you enable yourself to go for the objective. It's a chain reaction from play to play. Um, that's why I said earlier that Halo isn't not necessarily a luck like some people think it is, because it takes skill to make play after play after play. Uh, in Halo, not always the most skilled player wins or always the best player. It's the player that's able to play consistently with the least mistakes. It, and that's what, that goes back to what I said about fundamentals, you know. Um, you could be a, one of the best scoring teams in the NBA, but if you're constantly making turnovers or bad plays, you're going to lose. You know, opposed to a team like the Spurs, you know, that is one of the most fundam fundamentally strong teams. You know, they have older players. Um, they're not the fastest. You know, they're not the biggest. But they have some of the best fundamentals the NBA's ever seen. The players like Tim Duncan, you know, that are very consistent, very, um, I would say, humble for as good as they are, you know, and that's really important is not letting skill or victories go to your head. You know, as you get better, as your team gets better, don't let it change the way you perceive Halo or the way you carry yourself because you could have a great team and then by you getting an ego, you can ruin everything. So remember that. And um, yeah, I feel like we've done more than enough for Extract C. And um, you know, one thing I'll dabble on is to make sure you use all the various weapons that are on the and map. The jumps. A lot of people <laughs> just always use their BR, but I mean, yeah, and the jumps and um, standing at the right angles. For example, it only takes four shots to kill people. Uh -huh. um, if you look at me real quick, tempers. Um, 
you can, yep. you can always stand on, on this ledge right here. And this is a very a good spot because when people come chasing around this corner, even if they could have a one or two shot lead on you, if you jump throughout the air, that could be just the advantage you need to finish the kill. So um, you don't always want to challenge, but at the same time, you want to give yourself an ability to challenge if you have to. Because one thing I learned from a, a good player and friend of mine, um, Tyler Call Mentality, is that there's a right and wrong way to challenge. And the fact that if you can do, if you can challenge the right way on a consistent basis, it puts a lot more presence and pressure on the other team and disables them from pushing them out around the map freely. I know people know the differences between when they play kids that where they can't run out and kids when they can. When you play kids that have a perfect team shot or really good power weapon control, you know you're not running top middle or you know you're not running bottom middle because they're going to melt you. Opposed to when you play kids that are you know just scrambling around the map and you can push across top middle and get a fast. You can always do the Roy and go right, um, left, is, right, jump. <laughs> <laughs> or SK. Yeah, you can always do that. Yeah, good and that's because. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's not the SK anymore because uh, he went to college. He's playing Halo, though. Yes, he's playing. Anyways. Uh, he's confused. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> go to, you always hide shot mid on the pillar. You'll never see it. He's extract unit. Where is he? Oh, okay. The next one is Simon. Alright. So, uh, another thing I want to say is, uh, back to, like, uh, another thing I want to touch on when people will rush when there's, like, 30 seconds or 20 seconds and it's starting getting down to nitty degree. Uh, like, I feel like they get pressured and they get nervous and they're like, oh my god, we're going to lose the extraction or we're going to lose the game, so, like, we got to rush it and stuff. Like, maybe once in a while, like, if there's one second, like, if you know or you think you know that the people on the other team are starting to leave the extraction like more than like they need to like maybe like even like more than half their team is going to the other extraction if there's one second left like and you're right here I, I'd say go for it because sometimes you can get a sneaky convert so anyway yeah yeah and, and to, to add to that um we, we kind of went over extract yeah. D when we went over extract A if a lot of you didn't realize that it's the same extract that's why he's kind of just skimming over it um, the, the only difference is you don't really use the opening strat when you're doing this, like because it's a different. It's it's already like more than halfway through the game. Um, what, what, the most important thing on the D extract is controlling one of the bases from the very start. When you know C is done at bottom middle, either sprint blue or red, whatever's closest to you, and get whatever teammates that died in that in that chaos a good spawn, and enable yourself to control red ramp or blue ramp. And um, as you control these ramps, if you are the support player. Um, or even if you're not the support player, what's, what's really important is putting constant pressure, like I was talking about earlier, about knowing how to challenge the right and wrong way. And the way that kind of works is like peak shooting, you know, for example, if you can see the extract right here. If, if your team extracts it on this side, there's, you, you have no reason to push anywhere but staying right here and just constantly peak shooting and strafing. It's, that's what I was going back to when I was saying overextending. Um, if you have control of the map, you don't always have to push their spawns. You don't always have to push towards them because then you give them a chance to make a play. Like, if you know that you only need 20 to 30 seconds on an extract, just stay right here and do your best to space it out. Like, for example, I might stay right here for 10 seconds, and now that I know that um, 10 seconds has passed and I need to do it for 20 more seconds, I'm going to move to the window, and I'm going to do it for another 10 seconds. And the reason I'm going to do th I'm going to change positioning is that way is because they're going to be calling me out. It, I'm going to be constantly getting shots on me by trying to hold on the extract. But the places that I choose to stand always give me good peak shooting and scraping. So as I go from there to here, I can always duck under this glass right here. I can always move between the pillars. And why peak shooting is so important is because while their attention is on you, your teammates are able to push on them and make their kind of various plays. And after I've been right here for 10 seconds, and I know there's only 10 seconds left on the extract, I can push towards closed and finish it out on closed. And the reason that's important is because you start on red because it gives your teammates good spawns and it allows you to control the red side of the map. And then as you come close, you can see blue and red. So even if you do die, as long as you're able to push shots on all the people coming from blue, your teammates will be able to clean them up, and that should be enough to give you the last 10 seconds. And, um, so, and um, uh, E is on the yeah. again, right? Okay. And um, like I said, um, more, when you were repeating cycles of extracts, it, we've kind of already go, gone over them, so we don't need to keep repeating ourselves, especially with this video kind of running on. So um, what I'm going to do is just kind of show you how to close the game out and then go from there. And um, the way you would close this out is if it's a tied game, 
because then you want to, you know, do what you can to, to wait until you win the standoff, for example. If it's 2-2, two, two, you know, or something like that, 3-3, three, three, I, don't, I don't know what the score would be, you know, but if, it, if it's a simula similarity to what I'm saying, and you understand what I'm saying when I say it's a tight game, then the very first thing you want to do is win the slaying battle. This is a very good example of when you do need to overslay because they can see the extract from a lot of different angles. And this is one of the hardest extracts to get at times. So what's very important is to overslay, but in your zone. Don't overextend. There's a very big difference between overslaying and overextending. <laughs> overslaying is when you kill a little bit more than you need to. Overextending is when you push past your team's restriction limit. And a team's restriction limit is basically when you leave the sight of all three teammates. As long as you're in sight of one teammate, at least very minimum, then you're not overextending. But the moment you leave all three of your teammates sight or you're not in range to help one of them, then you've overextended and made a bad play, no matter what the situation. The only situation I can say that might change that is a 49-49 and you have a one shot that maybe you go for it. But nine times out of ten, that's not really the case. And so what I explain is it's important to win the stalemate. Um, one thing that I see a lot of kids doing that where they make a lot of mistakes on this map is they go for constant flanks. And when you go for these flanks, you enable them to get a quick extract on you. And if they get that quick extract, you can be in a very bad situation because this is one of the hardest extracts to fight for. So more or less, one of the better things to do is hold on your side, whether it be bottom blue or bottom red, and maybe send one kid up this lift right here and have him push bottom close as quick as possible because he stays near his teammates and gets a good flank without leaving too far. Um, I see a lot of people run bottom middle and try to push from bottom close. I would recommend not doing that because that just leaves your teammates at a disadvantage. And so it's very important you communicate who's doing what. For example, I see kids get the same idea at the same time sometimes and they do the same thing. Like you have two kids decide they want to flank and so they both run around and then you only have two kids defending against like three or four people. And so it's very crucial to identify who's doing what. Like for example, if you want to flank, you need to be like, all right, all right, I'm flanking. You guys stay there. You guys stay there. And then, like this is why small talk is very important. And it's very important not to get tunnel vision. A lot of kids they start slaying or they start chasing stuff and they stop talking. Um, sometimes it's more important to have one person talking from the start of the game to the end of the game than to have him getting killed because it enables everybody else to make plays. The more knowledge you have, the better choices you can make. And so this has been, um, you know, basically my ideas and Nick's ideas on how to play and, uh, Haven the most correct way. Um, thank you just, for uh, watching. Also, the armor what? abilities, uh, like, for me, pretty much, I think they vary with every game type. And, uh, like, just with the uh, Thruster, Hologram, and Arlite Shield, I think every one of them, like, all three of them, like, they are there for different situations. Like, if you already have the extraction and your Jordan just came up, I think you should pick a Thruster pack because you're kind of getting to that slaying mode, you know, spawn kill them, like, don't let them go for the extraction. And then the Harlot Shield, you know, to use like while you're going for the extraction or if you're about to get the extraction because, you know, you can protect your teammates uh, pretty much from anything if they're only coming from one way. And then the Hologram, if they have it but you don't know where they are and you can just throw it out there and they'll shoot it and uh, you could like probably go a different way. Yeah, and, and going, on, going off of that, what I think is, is something I think really crucial to what you were saying is as far as the Holograms go, that can really help you because, if, say for example, one of your teammates does die, or you do have one person flanking, if you send out that hologram, it sends out the image that there's still four people there. So, like, unless they're, like, they have really good communication and they're communicating just as hard as you do, it could force them to make the wrong play. You know, if they think one of you is running top, towards bottom close, they might run towards you to try to kill you, and then they realize that it's, it's a hologram, or they might shoot you and give away their positioning. And so... It, holograms, I think, are, are real crucial in objective game types because it can force other kids to make mistakes. And like I said earlier, um, it's sometimes not necessarily about being the better team or better player, but it's about playing mistake free Halo. And um, uh, do you have anything else to add to that, Nick? No, not really. That's pretty much it. Okay. Um, before we close off this video, I want to give special thanks to a couple people. Um, I want to thank Average Pro Gamers for giving us a chance to make some of these commentaries. I would like to give a shout out to Outright Gaming for throwing these different various online tournaments and free for alls for everybody to enjoy. And also let people know that um, Average Pro Gamers themselves will be hosting a free for all pretty soon in the next couple weeks. We will have um, various prizes. And if you would like to find out what these prizes are, follow me on Twitter and I will be happy to tell you. Um, my Twitter is the same as my gamer tag. No spaces at Goku Rises. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I'm here to help anybody in the community that needs me. So just message me and we're available anytime. Thank you. Have a great day.